Hey there folks, Lazy Bones 2020 here again with another SRK unboxing. Uh, if you recall, back during E3, uh, we ran a feature with a manufacturer for accessories called Scuff. Uh, they create uh, custom controllers for the PlayStation and the Xbox. Uh, now, whenever it was first announced a little bit before E3, I was curious about how they could be implemented uh, into fighting games. Because uh, the Scuff Vantage in specific, which we'll be unboxing today, uh, is a little bit different than your average controller. Um, the usual controller, you know, it's got its regular sticks and buttons, but the Vantage has tons of remappable features on it. Uh, replaceable buttons, uh, sticks, things like that. Uh, it's got paddles underneath. Um, and I was just wondering about how effective that might be in the fighting game community. Uh, these controllers are usually marketed just towards uh, FPS games, those types of esports. Uh, but I feel like with current fighting games that we've got right now, especially a game like Dragon Ball Fighters, where it's really built for the controller, um, that it could be so much more utilized uh, with some extra paddles, uh, maybe you can map your assists and things like that to the bottom. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's open up our brand new uh, Scuff uh, that was shipped to us by Scuff uh, Gaming, and uh, let's, let's take a look. Alrighty, so, first we'll open the box. And in that box is another box. Alrighty. I'm gonna just toss this on the ground. Okay, so lovely scuff embroidery here. Uh, it's got the scuff logo here, and then it's got some really cool hexagons. Uh, makes me kind of feel like a Sam Raimi Spider-Man uh, with, with that design there. Really neat, um, you know? A black box, nice box. <laughs> but from there, let's take a look about what's in the box, because that might be a bit more interesting. Huh? So, magnetic here. That's fancy. So, I'm going to open it up. <laughs> Man. And uh, they're not lying how much they care about that competitive edge. Prepare to win. And, um, man, there's a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> Don't worry. In due time. In due time. First, let's uh, see. They sent us a nice little note uh, to our valued gamers. Um, man, that's really cool. It's got a note from the CEO and founder of Scuff Gaming uh, since 2011. So, uh, very, very cool there. That's, a, that's pretty early on, I'd say, for the custom controller market. And there we go. <laughs> very good for safekeeping. So, I think I'm going to work around this way uh, with what's in the box. So, First off, a scuff hat. It's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't know they had so much, even though it would make sense if they're like an esports thing. So much branding um, that they've got here. Pretty well made. Um, really cool. It's got scuff all, all inside there, <laughs> all on the, on the rib even, and the big scuff logo. Then we've got scuff lanyard. Very nice. Let's just say here. ID product source. That's probably the, the manufacturer of that. And then a scuff pin of the Vantage specifically. That's pretty cool. Um, you can put that on, on your bag or something like that, maybe on a shirt you really like. <laughs> Very neat. I'm gonna start putting this stuff out here. And, and there we have a scuff shirt. Prepare to win. Man, they they're really all about that, which makes sense because uh, they're supposed to give you the, the competitive edge. And then more scuff branding here, if I can move it. Very, very cool. Very awesome stuff uh, for scuff to send to us. Get that right here. And in this compartment of the box, a bunch of compartments. Oh, it's full of a surprise. <laughs> Bag yourself another victory. I, I love a good pun, and, and I say that's a pretty good pun. Anything inside the bag? Just checking. That's pretty sturdy. I've had a lot of drawstring bags in my day, um, and this is a pretty good one. Pretty, pretty durable. Nice. Uh, big enough to fit in your, uh, your scuff advantage. Alrighty, put that down there. And then... Let's see, I think it would still make sense to go this way. No, nah, I'll, I'll go with the controller next. Ugh. So the Scuff Vantage itself is in here. 
This is the wireless model. It comes with all the neat accessories and things like that. This one comes specifically with the traveler's case in it. Um, but it's got this nice little slip case here on the back. Shows you all the awesome features about the Scuff Vantage, about its SAX buttons. Every time I read that, I think of uh, Metroid Fusion and the SAX. I know that's not what it is. It's the uh, side access buttons, side action buttons. I'll get it down in a second. <laughs> but you can remap those. The four paddles on the bottom, all remappable. Um, interchangeable face plates, magnetic. Uh, very, very cool. So you can change the color of your scuff whenever you'd like. They sell those individually as well. Um, and you could also get different thumbsticks, different lengths, either domed, domes this way, <laughs> or, or convex. That's concave. <laughs> um, I digress. Uh, and then you've got your D-pad here that can be exchanged for a uh, disc, which is something that I really thought was neat uh, whenever I got to see it at E3. Um, I felt like that had a lot of um, function or a lot that it could offer for fighting games, especially with those swooping motions. Um, and you can remove the vibration modules. It's really cool. That helps with the weight if you want a lighter controller. Uh, so there's nothing there to throw you off. I know some people that like the vibration because then they know whenever the trigger's pulled and things. So, so that's up to you. You can have one of them in, both of them in, or none of them in. Uh, Anti-friction rings. So on my controllers, on these guys here, you don't see it too much, but on my PS3 controllers that I've had, I destroyed the little ring around the controllers that I had just by mashing left. No, that's right. By mashing right. <laughs> so it's nice that you can swap those out and they add some durability to the controller. Um, so I'll put this guy right here. So then it'll make more sense when I get these out. So this is, looks to be an exchangeable faceplate um, for the scuff controller. This one is a cool metal black uh, color here. Very awesome. Put that down there and then make it your own. I almost said make it your way. Um, well, that's not untrue. That's not the, the tagline they're going with. This is a scuff vantage accessories kit. Um, very, very cool. So you can make all of your sticks and triggers uh, that red color um, if you so choose. So very good mix uh, that they sent to me. I love that black and red. And then a cool uh, little info infographic right here for you that teaches you all the cool things about the controller you just got. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so got these out. I'm gonna put a few things back in the box because the, the main attraction is this guy right here. So back in the box you go, Mr. Hat. And the shirt, lanyard, pin, drawstring bag, which even has a spot for your headphones. That's nice. <laughs> Oh no! Don't worry, it's durable. And then I think I'll keep those guys out. Because those will be good too, to show off the different functions. So I'll put the box down here. Don't know what that sound was. So we can take a closer look at these guys. So, the Scuff Vantage. Let's uh, open it up. That's actually really cool. That, that, that was neat. Officially licensed by PlayStation, by the way. Uh, I didn't mention that before. So this is Sony's answer to, say, the Xbox Elite controller. Uh, they've had a bunch of other third-party controllers. Um, I don't think any of them have been sold in America, or at least any of the ones I've wanted to pick up. Um, everywhere else, I think, but that. But uh, the scuff, they're really going all out for. Um, even the, the little faceplate box has the PlayStation branding on it. Um, the accessories kit as well. So very cool, very cool stuff. Make it your own at scuffgaming.com. So you could also custom order these um, before you get it. So you could have any of those colors you wanted uh, for the sticks, much like an Xbox Design Labs controller um, and those types of things. But uh, this is the good old scuff. Very, very firm box, very nice. Let's open it up. Uh, Sweet. 
precision and control in every direction. Man, this this if there's one brand that has confidence, I'd say Scuff has a ton of confidence <laughs> for for all of this just gamer culture, all of this this victory they're talking about. Let's see, it says get ready. This guide provides a brief introduction to the most performance-focused controller you've ever owned. Let's take this off, see what's inside. So this is gonna talk about all the controller features, like the thumbsticks, vibration modules, trigger covers, hair triggers. Ah, something I didn't mention, but something we will look at early, uh, later. Uh, then it's got the quick access remapping switch, the audio touch bar, and the interchangeable accessories. Controller layout, wired mode, wireless mode, and a lot of other cool stuff. We'll keep this out so we don't forget about anything. Move those over to the side. Then the scuff itself. How do I get this out? Oh, like that. Ooh, that feels awesome. Everything is a very, very definitive click. Even the D-pad. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's what I like. Um, to compare, like with the PlayStation pad, you probably can't even hear that. Uh, Xbox pad has a definitive click as well. That's some good stuff. Good stuff from the scuff. Here's the back with those paddles that we were talking about. So these are newly designed for this controller uh, from what I was told at E3. Very, very cool, very neat. Um, down here, you've got the option to switch from USB mode to Bluetooth mode, so you could do Bluetooth at home, and then when you're out at tournaments, it turns that function off whenever you switch it to USB, so you don't have to worry about unpairing the controller or anything like that. Um, that's something I had a little issue with when I was at E3, uh, excuse me, when I was at uh, Evo this past year. I've gotten those mixed up a lot with the, uh, the E, the E words. <laughs> Very nice here. These are those side action buttons we we're talking about. I was also told that everything Oh, that's a lot easier than I expected, is removable. All these extra features you can just take off if you're concerned that you're going to accidentally um, bump into them or something like that. Because now you, you still can, but you really have to try uh, to be able to do that. So let me pop this back on. Hopefully it's just as easy to do that. And it is. So it appears. Awesome. And we've got the touch bar here, D-pad, very grippy triggers, very, <laughs> triggers, sticks, very grippy sticks. Uh, those are awesome. Um, my finger's not sliding off of those anytime soon. R1, again, this is another big difference between the PlayStation controller, uh, the standard. You can feel it, you can hear it. It's not quite as the mechanical keyboard click. Very awesome. So that's everything on the outside of the scuff. Let's take it apart real quick. So what's really nice about this is it's got these latches that let you just open it on up. Oh, let me do both of them. Uh, so you can replace that faceplate. As easy as that. That's awesome. So that has those friction rings we were talking about earlier. Uh, very, very cool. Um, let's see, yep. And I imagine they just kind of pop out. And... Yep, okay. <laughs> I, I was a little scared for a second, but uh, yeah, they just pop out real easy like that. Um, so that's the inside. Uh, kind of looks like a Terminator with the Arnold's skin off. Uh, that, that sounded weird. <laughs> so really easy to take things out of. So that's the vibration module. It's nice enough to tell you which one is which, right and left. So we'll pop this guy back in. Very cool. Then sticks come off like that. It does take a little bit to pull them off, so nothing to worry about them accidentally coming off. So that's good. How about putting them back on though? Okay, there we go. Takes a little bit of practice, sure, but not super crazy to, to take off and to put back on. And then the scuff D-pad, well that came off real easy, but it's uh, magnetized. That was fun. 
How far can I do it? Eh, almost. And, oh, <laughs> neat. Um, I'm a sucker for stuff like that. Very awesome. But these silver buttons, I don't think can be taken off. The uh, options and the share button. Um, so those I think have to stay silver. As well as the D-pad. I don't think I saw the option to change the color of the D-pad, interestingly enough. So we'll just leave this out here because I don't think we're done with this box. So this part comes off nice and easy. Then there's this cool little cutout. Oh, <laughs> this cool little cutout here. Um, so you can kind of see what's on the inside. And <laughs> neat. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe I should start. I think I might need a bigger table for all this stuff Scuff gave me. <laughs> so customize your experience. So this looks like that's where the disc is going to be, the other sticks are going to be, things like that. Oh, it's so nice, I don't want to open it, but I have to, because that's what this is all about, so. Alrighty. And do 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 do. And do I pull it out again? Does it just open? Okay. Oh, oh no. The dome stick. I said it right this time. So here we've got some longer trigger covers. We've got some domed sticks here. Um, so for those, the traditional PlayStation stick, that's usually how it is. Uh, for people in, say, driving games, I believe the preferred way was indented stick on the top and then on the bottom right, like a dome stick. I think that's how the Xbox Duke was like. Um, and then some black um, anti-friction rings to go right here with this guy and that disc. And this is the removal tool. You use this to take off the paddles down here. There'll be instructions for that, I'm sure. <laughs> so, one thing I was super pumped about was this disc. So I'll pop it on real fast. And you can tell what goes where because one spot's a lot taller than the other ones or longer. Cool. So put that on there for now, and then we'll get back to it, because there's there's more to go. This is that box we were talking about earlier, that uh, Traveler's Case. It has a nice scuff logo, it's even got some goodies on here. So there's the, the USB cable that comes with the controller, with the real nice wrapping on it. Uh, it feels like it's braided in, in some fashion, uh, and it's gold, uh, gold tipped. Uh, so that means it has like the fastest transfer rate and things like that. That's the, the type of materials that it's used for. And then a scuff pill thing. Um, I'll have to look and see what this is exactly. I don't know if it says on the box. Oh, oh. Uh, no. I don't know what this pill thing is. Maybe it's for the USB? We'll find out. There's a lot to take out here. I think I should have saved the other controllers for later, maybe. <laughs> and open, learn, perform. So this is most likely the instruction manuals and things like that. Open that up. Very sleek, very nice. The packaging for this stuff is insane. So we got some stickers. Everybody needs some stickers. Uh, my computer is riddled with them. All of the computers I've had. Uh, they come in different colors. Scuff Gaming, hashtag, prepare to win. Nice, put that down here. Oh, I should put this on. Looks like it lit up. Um, put this on USB mode. Uh, <laughs> Always read, understand, and follow warnings and instructions for your controller before use. Have you done that? Let me know in the comments, because I have not. And now I feel like a bad person for not doing so. This is a thicker info manual than you get in games nowadays. That's really impressive. <laughs> oh, man. But for $200 for the wireless controller, they really pull out all the stops for you. Um, definitely want to show you that value and what you purchased. There's all this setup information. Anything you can't find online is most likely in here if you need any help. Um, so really good to have. That's awesome. So... I think that is everything that was in all of these boxes. Just look in one more time.
Yes, okay, cool. I want to put on some of these red accessories and see how those look with the nice faceplate that Scuff sent us. Take. Customer and technical support, limited warranty, six months. Nice there, nice there. It's probably any time longer than that is whenever most people's controllers will have worn down for natural causes. Okay. So these feel, these feel the same, which is good. I was a little concerned that it might have a different feel just because of the, the coloration to it. I know some plastics are a little different. Uh, let's take off this guy. I know, I was so excited to get you and I'm already replacing you with this fancy pants red one. But you can't put the faceplate on with this on first, so we'll take that off. I'll put the original sticks here. Let's, let's just make it all red, um, red and black. So I'll do, I'll have to take this guy out and part to that. Man, there's a lot of stuff they sent us. This is awesome. Oh, that look is nice. And it even, it feels more matte than this one. That's neat. Um, let's see. So, keep getting sidetracked because there's so much awesome stuff. I'm going to put a short stick here. Sweet. Short stick here. And then I'm going to put a dome stick, a tall dome stick here, just for comparison's sake. Don't really use the right stick in fighting games very much, so why not have it be a crazy looking one? There we go. Got both of those on there nice and good. Keep the vibration modules and, oh, it looks like the side, they don't come with other side action buttons. That's what it's called. What did I call it before? I don't know, but the, the SAX buttons on the sides. So those will have to stay silver as well. These guys come off? I don't think so. Well, they must. Ah, that was terrifying. I hope I didn't break it, but we'll put on a red L2. Okay. Up and over. Sweet. Ah, but that means the L1 and R1s must remain silver. So that answers my question. I was going to mix and match them. Looks like you get the option to mix and match it by having to mix and match it. Then these are the long triggers here. So you go up and down. <laughs> That's sick. It looks like, like a tooth. Ooh, this one's rubber so your fingers don't slip off or anything like that. Very cool. Oh, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever had a problem with your controller standing up on its own now, it's probably going to be a bit harder if you <laughs> don't have them uh, equilateral to each other. Okay, so aside from that, so this one came with the black anti-friction rings. Let me take those off. And put on the red ones. They go in really easy, so that's good. And one red, one black. Ooh, that is nice. That is slick. Now everything feels as it should. And can't forget the disc. So there it is with the new black uh, metallic black face paint, face paint, face plate, and then these cool red sticks that we've got here. This disc is the one that I was talking about earlier that I felt like would be really good for fighting games because I'm crazy about using the D-pad whenever I play. Uh, so this gives you a lot of control, a lot of access to those diagonals. I can't wait to try it out. They didn't have a fighting game to test it with at E3, um, but we'll get a look at it here soon. Sweet. 
Oh, let's uh, try taking off these paddles. And to do so, I'm gonna look at one of our handy dandy manuals. So, ah, some features I forgot. So I'm glad that I kept it out. So, uh, this is where your volume bar is. Whenever you have a headset uh, put into the controller, you're gonna be able to toggle your audio options down here so you can change how, how loud the, the mic is and everything like that. So that's really cool. Um, what were some other things that I missed? Ah, the, you can adjust the draw of the triggers by twisting these little guys down here. So you only have to go a shorter distance. I had the same issue though when I was at E3. If you press like hard on it at all, like short, like one step, it's, it's fine. But if you do a tight press on it, it's just gonna go right back down. So maybe there's some, some more I should read up on and seeing how that goes. But very cool, I like it a lot. Um, maybe I should put the black one on here just in case, mix it up a little. Because I do like how the red looks, but I don't know if I'm crazy about the the red rubber with everything else. But that's the thing, you can, you can mix it up. They've got greens, they've got blues, uh, they've got a bunch of different options for you to see what you like. Kind of looks like some eyebrows, like some, some concerned eyebrows. <laughs> but anyway, then you've got the, the touch bar light up here and the, the scuff light there, just like on that standard PlayStation controller. Ah, what I was forgetting to do. Let's see how we take out those paddles. To remove a paddle, slide up, twist slightly, and then lift. Slide up, twist slightly, and lift. Oh, okay. So you slide it up, twist slightly. Oh, twist this direction. It all makes sense now. And then, so slide up. Oh, that's really easy. That one almost sounded scary. But, so now you can have those removed if you're concerned about accidentally pressing a button or something like that during gameplay. Um, not something that for this controller I feel like I've done. I've dabbled in some of the Xbox Elite controllers uh, and it does feel a little easier on those, but these are pretty stiff, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's try to put them back in from the top. Oh, wait, does it say which paddle it is? So this is paddle three, that's good. So put it from the top. Okay, cool. So it's very similar to how it was earlier. This one is paddle number one. So this one goes over here. It was his head, Mr. Krabs. He was number one. Very easy. And then this one is paddle number two. So you just tilt it and then you pull it down. Very simple. Uh, I was a little scared that it was gonna be real complex because they, they feel really thin they're strong, but thin, um, but no, then they fit real good in there. Every real definitive click. It takes a lot to press them. Um, not too much, but enough to not accidentally do it. Uh, so kind of give a good comparison in sizes here. So this is the scuff vantage compared to the traditional PlayStation controller. So it's very similar. They look real similar from the back. Um, with the way the analog sticks are, or excuse me, the way the handles are made. Um, they're real similar there. Um, of course, the face is gonna feel more reminiscent of an Xbox controller because of where they have the sticks placed and uh, it goes down a bit further here. Um, imagine if you kind of add more of a chin um, to the traditional controller. And then just to show comparison to an Xbox controller, even now, the Xbox controller almost feels heavier, um, or just as heavy, even though this guy's got a bit more going on. So we've got these here. This is definitely a bigger controller than the Xbox controller. It kind of eats it for lunch. Yeah, that's nuts. Um, I was thinking it was a lot closer in size to show it from behind here. Yeah, so this is the biggest controller that I've owned aside from the Xbox Duke, but um, that's for another day. Ultra neat. Um, so uh, we're gonna do some tests with it. We're gonna see how we can apply it to fighting games. Um, 
See, uh, cause how I was thinking, you know, for Dragon Ball Fighters, things like that. Your assists on this side, so you don't have to worry about anything there. You can just have them. And then you can put your super move buttons, the R1 and the R2 over here. So it's just, man, I'm already sparking. Easy, you don't have to move your finger up whenever you're there to do both. You can, your fingers are already laying, they're already relaxed. So very interesting. Got a lot to look forward to with the scuff. Um, Got to thank him for sending us so much stuff. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna put it all to good use and see how uh, us fighters can take advantage of something like the scuff vantage. Well, we'll be seeing y'all out there. Thanks for stopping by.